What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday night. We are refreshing for the week ahead for a fresh start on Monday. So I'm going to do a couple things with you guys. We're going to go through my supplements. We are going to deep dive into journaling, setting intentions for the week, and kind of showing you guys my Sunday night routine and how to set your week up for success. So super excited to have you guys here. Drop below any comments and questions that you have. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so you never miss a video from me again. All right, we are replenishing our morning supplements. We're gonna put them in our little grandma pill case so that we're set up for success this week. I'm gonna go one by one through each of these, why I take them, and the whole rundown. Okay, so our first supplement here that we have is our anti-anxiety. This is an all natural supplement that I suggest to a lot of my clients, especially if they are on SSRIs or they struggle with anxiety and they are looking for an all natural route. Uh, we normally work together, me and my team work together with their doctors, my clients' doctors, and we try our absolute best to get all of our clients off of all their SSRIs and get them on an all natural supplement. So I love this supplement. I take it every single morning. Also, my husband takes it every morning. I'm not diagnosed with anxiety, uh, but I noticed ever since COVID, I've been struggling with it just a little bit. And so it helps a ton. It also helps with mood regula regulation and mental clarity. So this is one of my favorites. I'm gonna be putting these in my little pill case. I already put the anti-anxiety in there, so this is one of the top ones that I suggest to all of my clients and that I personally take on a regular basis. All right, the next supplement that I suggest that I also personally take every single morning and that my husband takes every morning, come on. Saffron Pure, this is probably one of the most underrated supplements on the frickin' market. There's not a lot of companies that carry it. I don't know why. Saffron is literally just a flower bud. You might have heard of like saffron soup. People cook with it a lot. Um, but this is an all natural antidepressant and this is something that my husband takes every single day. It helps a ton with mood regulation. Uh, and this is also something I take every single day. I freaking love saffron. I have not been uh, diagnosed with depression, nor do I feel as if I'm a depressed person ever in life, uh, but I do take it just because I notice a huge difference in my mood uh, when I take it versus when I don't, and same with my husband. It almost relaxes your nervous system to the point where you can actually make decisions without snapping, because I don't necessarily have depression, I don't necessarily have anxiety on a regular basis, but I do have a hard time uh, with, let's say, regulating my mood to where I don't just snap um, and freak the fuck out. And so this really calms me and like almost gives me a second to go, okay, take a deep breath. <sighs> All right, what do you actually want to say without screaming at somebody? Because I'm a very aggressive person. <laughs> and so sometimes it's hard for me not to snap. And so Saffron Pure is one of my absolute favorites. And it's something I definitely, definitely recommend to the majority of my clients, especially if they're struggling with depression, anxiety, or mood regulation. The next thing that I take every single morning is vitamin D3 and K2. Nobody gets enough vitamin D. Remember guys, vitamin D is from the sun. When's the last time I saw the fucking sun? Especially in Maryland where it's snowing and dark and gross. Not very often, you could tell by my pasty ass skin. So I love vitamin D, it not only helps with mood regulation, but also healthy bones and heart support, um, assists in immune support and blood circulation. So I take this also every single day. Uh, vitamin D is something that the majority of people are deficient in, like, we, like I was saying, because it is literally a vitamin we get from the sun. None of us see enough of the sun. The majority of us are inside all day, every fucking day, sitting at a desk, typing away, and we don't get enough sunlight. So if you are experiencing any lack of mood or even, honestly, any type of like um, shifts in your mood during the winter, vitamin D is gonna be awesome, but it also is great with um, supporting your immune system, which is pretty freaking cool, especially with all the COVID stuff going around. The next thing that I like to take is L-Arginine. I love L-Arginine. 
This is definitely one of my go-tos. I keep this in, especially when I am on prep. This is a new one, so I'm gonna have to open it up. Uh, but it supports circulation, assists in great workouts, and supports blood flow, which I love, especially if you're somebody who is training, uh, working out really hard. You guys need to remember, when you are working out, when you're lifting weights, you're breaking muscle down, you are not building it up. And so when you are lifting weights and you start to feel something called the pump, that is water and blood flow to the muscles, so you want to make sure that you have a ton of really awesome circulation in your workouts, which is what L-Arginine assists in, because the more blood flow and water you can pump to your muscles, the more efficient your workouts are going to be. You'll be able to lift heavier for a longer period of time. It helps with muscular endurance and muscular strength. So. I I love L-Arginine, it's freaking awesome, and I take it every single morning. Okay, the next thing, which I personally do not carry, um, I cannot find a distributor to, to, um, to help me carry Ginkgo, but I do take Ginkgo every single morning. Um, you can use any brand, this is just a brand that I use, I get it off Amazon. It's great for memory support and also circulation. So I love Ginkgo, it's super helpful for my mental clarity and I take it every single morning. All right, gotta put these these little Ginkgos into my, into my little grandma pill case. All right, the next thing that I take is L-glutamine. Now, I used to carry L-glutamine in powder form, but I no longer carry it. Uh, honestly, we didn't sell a lot of it, so I was like, eh, whatever. And most of the time, what I do with my supplements is I carry stuff that I take, but then I also carry stuff that um, I know that other people will take, but sometimes a lot of people don't know what these things do, and so they don't take them, and then, yeah, that's what happens. So, L-glutamine's one of my favorites. You can get it from anywhere. I get mine from Vitamin Shop. Uh, glutamine is great not only for efficient workouts, uh, for muscular growth, immune system, but also for gut health, which a lot of people don't think about. It's a free form amino acid, so that is glutamine. Take it every morning. And the last and final thing that I take is Hard by Core Nutritionals. This helps a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton um, with hormonal balance. Uh, just because I know, especially for women, it can be super freaking difficult to lose fat and gain muscle um, just with our increased estrogen. So um, this helps a ton with hardening, recomp, uh, and balance of your hormones. So I take this every single day. Uh, this is made by Core Nutritionals. Nutritionals. I have not found another company that makes this, but I take this every day. And I used to have a code with them, but I don't have a code with them anymore just because this is literally the only supplement by them that, that I take. And so if you guys want a discount on Core Nutritional supplements, you can use code Paul, which is my coach's code, so that you guys can get a discount on all of their supplements. And if at any point you want to buy any of our Inner Alpha Fitness supplements, you can visit Inner Alpha Shop at any time, and you can use code Amory for a discount at checkout. So that's all I got. Those are my morning supplements. And yeah, off to off to journaling. All right, it's the next day. <laughs> my parents ended up coming over and then my whole entire life got astray and so I wasn't able to record. But I did map out last night what my weekly to-dos were for the entire week. And since it is Monday, now it is time to map out when the frickin' heck am I gonna get all this stuff done? Now, most of the time I get like 98% of the stuff on my to-do list done. Sometimes I just write stuff on here that I know I'm not going to get done this week, um, but I need to remind myself, okay, this eventually needs to get done either this month or whenever uh, I get around to it, right? It's something that's not as pressing to absolutely get done this week, but the majority of the stuff I do get done and the reason why I get so much done and so many people ask all the time, how the frickin' heck do I get so much done? Done is because I map out every single freaking detail of what my week needs to look like and then I put it into action. I physically actually do it. Uh, but before I do that, the most important thing that you guys need to do is figure out what you want to create first. And so this is my journal of things 
that I want to create. It is the same 10 things every single day, the same exact thing that I write down every single day, every single morning. Um, and mine are 13, I have 13 things, but I suggest that you figure out 10 things that you wanna create in your life. It doesn't necessarily have to be this year. You could minimize it down to this year, but mine is just a general sense of what I wanna create over the next five years of my life, in my health, my wealth, and in my relationships, and who I need to show up as. And so the way that you write this down, the reason this is so important also um, is because if you don't know where you're going, how are you supposed to do the actions that are required to get what you want, right? So if you don't know what you want, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what actions to take. So first get super, super clear. This is step one and I'll put a little step one thing here. This is step one, figuring out what you want. What the freaking heck do you actually want your life to look like, right? What goals do you want to achieve? And once you do decide what those goals are, start writing them out as I am's or I have or I created or we, if you have a significant other, something you want to create with your significant other, write them as if they have already happened. Because when you start to write this out every single day, what happens is you feel that sense of gratitude before you even achieve these things. So I love doing this. This really gives me that feeling of gratitude that I am going to achieve every single thing on this list. When is it gonna happen? I don't freaking know. The timing isn't up to me. All I'm responsible for is taking the actions required in order for me to get here. Getting one step closer, right? One physical step closer, 1% better every single day so that I can get closer to achieving these goals. So once you have your goals, this is step one, goals and write them out as I am's or I have's or things that you already have created. Then. The next thing is, okay, I have these goals and these things I want to achieve. What the freaking heck do I need to do in order to get to these goals, right? What are those action steps? And so I would break them down, if I were you, into a timeline uh, per month of different action steps that you need to take in your health, your wealth, and your relationships and work on little projects here and there throughout the entire year so you don't feel like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed, I have so much to do. You could just focus on one month at a time. So with that, you take your monthly goals, your monthly projects that you are trying to get done to get one step closer to these goals and you map them out into weekly to-dos, all right? And so I have my personal to to-dos at the top. I have my business to-dos at the bottom. I broke them up into two different segments. Now in my personal is pretty much my, my relationships and also my health and fitness stuff. So my personal life and then in my business is everything in or off of fitness that I need to get done. It's all mapped out right here. Once I write something down, Here's the other notebook. <laughs> Once I write something down in my uh, journal, in my, my weekly journal of when I'm going to get it done, what day of the week I'm gonna get it done, I highlight it orange so that I know it's on the list, it's going to get done, it's already mapped out, it's time bound, all that good stuff. So every single day, and I'll flip you guys around so you can see this. So when it comes to my to-dos for the week, I try to map them out into specific days and time block. And so there's a couple things that are absolutes throughout every single week. My workout, my journaling, my reading, exactly what I'm doing for that day, what TikTok content I'm posting. I know that sounds fucking crazy, but what TikTok content I'm posting that day, what I'm posting on my Instagram, Instagram story and what I'm having for dinner. So as you can see, the only day that's filled out today is Monday because that's what day it is. So I've only time blocked for Monday, um, but Tuesday has the workout, journaling, read, what I'm doing that day, what I'm posting on TikTok. I'm doing a IG live with one of my clients uh, tomorrow. And then of course dinner, same thing with Wednesday. I have my workout, I'm gonna go grocery shopping, journaling, reading, what I'm doing that day, what TikTok I'm posting, what I'm posting on my Instagram story, what I'm having for dinner, same exact thing. It's all absolutes every single day of the week. The only days that are a little bit different are Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays because Fridays is a rest day and it's really just a catch up day. Saturdays is all 
family and all like my personal life stuff. And then Sundays I do work out, I do create a little bit of content and I do a lot of personal stuff. Um, and then down here I do put a little bit of like notes and fun stuff that I've been tracking. I've been tracking my TikTok following ever since the beginning of January. I started out with 5,000 TikTok followers and it's only been one month and we have gained about 6,000 new TikTok followers. And then I always uh, track my IG my IG um, following too, because what you don't track doesn't grow, so gotta track that shit, because that's one of my goals that I have this year, is get 100K on TikTok and have 25K on IG by the end of the year. So, when it comes to each and every day, I wake up every morning, I write down my goals, it's the same exact thing every single day. Then, I look at my to-do list and I go, okay, what on my to-do list falls under content creation for social media. And once I figure out what falls under content creation for social media, I start to time block it out. 9 a.m., work out and record, which I, I did this morning already. I think it's like four right now, which is <laughs> how ironic, perfect timing. 12 o'clock, Trello, and then I also had meetings. Uh, 3.21, super fucking specific. Um, story post and question box, 4 p.m., batching YouTube. What I'm doing right now, woohoo, perfectly on time. 5 p.m., uh, new Facebook software setup. Uh, and emails, answering emails, 6 p.m., doing check-ins, 6.30, content meetings, 7.30, startup webinar for my 21-day challenge. I already posted my workout and my story to Instagram, so I can mark that off my little listy poo. This is the best feeling in the world, marking something off. And then I'm having shrimp pasta for dinner. We journaled today already, and I'm going to read tonight. So that is how I map out every single day, time block it out, make sure that I am staying on a time-bound schedule. For instance, when it came to doing Trello and meetings this morning, 3.30 started to hit, and I was like, oh, fucking shit, I'm running over. I got to stop what I'm doing and move on to the next thing. This prevents you from taking too much time and spending too much time on one thing and getting way too carried away, and then your whole entire day is over, and all you did all day was scroll TikTok, or all you did all day was scroll Instagram or look up ideas or whatever and you never actually got to the meat of what your to-do list told you to freaking do so those are the three things number one batch out your goals what do you actually want to achieve write them into I am's number two put them into a monthly timeline the action items that you need in order to achieve those goals on a monthly timeline what are you going to get done when what are those goals throughout the entire month in order to achieve these big overarching goals number three every single week should be done on sunday you can do it monday morning if you really want to map out what you need to get done for that week what is vital to get you one step closer to your goals for that week step four map it out into the week into realistic time bound goals so that you have it all time blocked, you stay focused and you stay on track. I hope that that was helpful for you guys. This is something that I do every single week. It really keeps me on track. It really helps me a lot. Using Sundays as a reset is a freaking game changer for me. If you are not doing that, I highly, highly suggest you start doing it ASAP instead of just kind of wasting your Sunday away watching football, eating chili and drinking beer, which is cool. You could do that too, but definitely use Sunday as a reset so that you wake up Monday refreshed, you know what you need to get done and you kick off your week on a good foot. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. Click on that little bell so you never miss a fit tip from me again. And I'll see you guys on the next video.